at number one is Angel City. And listen, there's already been a lot of news around this pick. There was a multi-team trade that took place to make sure Angel City was landed in this number one spot. And alongside of that trade reporting, there was the news that Alyssa Thompson was a target for this franchise. And this was before the official January 9th deadline was completed and before Alyssa Thompson had even uh, declared for uh, draft registration. But now, as we're about two days away from this draft, Alyssa Thompson is officially registered for the NWSL draft and all signs point to selecting her at number one here. Completely. I mean, when all the rumors swirled from um, the LA Times saying that Angel City wanted number one just so they could get Alyssa Thompson, it was almost like a caveat. There was an asterisk because Alyssa Thompson had yet to register at that point. Of course, by that evening, this was last Friday, I believe all this happened. Um or, or last Thursday, excuse me, by that evening, Alyssa Thompson had registered for the draft. Her name was submitted. So she's she's going to go number one overall to Angel City. Uh, she's a forward, 18 years old. Um, she committed to Stanford at 15 years old, but has since rescinded that, now entering the draft and making her debut in the NWSL as an 18-year-old. She also has a couple caps under the senior national team. Um, this is a name that you're going to get to know very quickly if you don't already. Uh, but for sure, Alyssa Thompson going number one to Angel City. And I think it's a good pickup for them, right? Like to add a little bit of depth into their front line. We saw a lot of injuries last year that Angel City suffered, whether it was Kristen Press and her ACL or Sydney LaRue after being traded from Orlando. Uh, this is a team that that needs depth in that position and for a player that could potentially be out a lot due to international windows um, I think getting her in and experienced especially in LA is going to be huge for Thompson yeah I'm with you I think I was I was going to ask you that I was going to say like positionally you know mm -hmm. for for this Angel City team does this, is this a selection that makes sense for you and it sounds like you agree with it that you're you're, you're down with this all right. I, I do. I think it does make a little bit more sense just because we saw Freya Coombe not rotate a lot last year, right? Uh, especially in her midfield. So to get a midfielder for Angel City, I think would be beneficial for them, but I don't think they would get a lot of playing time. And I think a condition perhaps for Alyssa Thompson to, to join the league was like, hey, I want to play, right? Like. <laughs> You want to play. You want to play. Yeah. So uh, you don't want to be one of those. You don't want to be a number one draft pick that sits on the bench and gets 15 minutes at the end of the game. Yeah. I, I look, Listen, I, I don't think you I don't think you're Angel City and you make the move to land this pick. Because let's let's go back to this trade a little bit and walk through some of the steps they traded. Angel City traded with Portland first there was Yasmin Ryan was the player involved and money was involved and then there yeah. was a trade with Angel City and even more allocation money was involved along with Yasmin Ryan so you're telling me that you're spending nearly nearly half a million dollars for a number one pick in Alyssa Thompson we're talking 450,000 ish dollars here right to make this selection and to not play this player listen i know i think we're gonna see i think we're gonna see Alyssa thompson in i hope we do <laughs> and i hope that we do and listen i, I think it I, I i think if you have this player um available declared for the draft at number one you absolutely take Thompson and yes is she going to need yeah. time to adapt to the professional level uh, especially a league like NWSL where it's very fast right very transitional very fast paced, can be very physical at times I think more than ever you want to get this young player acclimated as, as quickly also, as you can I don't so think she's gonna need that much it. I don't think she's going to need that much adjustment. She's been playing with boys teams two years older than her. She's already had caps internationally against England, against Spain. I, I think her transition is is going to be pretty smooth. I think the biggest tra transition for her is going to be playing under a Freya Coombe system and, and yeah. playing along certain players where she's maybe not the superstar anymore um, and, and has to fit a role a little bit more versus having the freedom to do whatever she wants.
I'm with you. Number two, New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC, number two overall selection would anticipate that they are going to go with what is they perceive as the best available player at this position. But we believe that they're going to go with Michelle Cooper, the forward out of Duke University at number two, 21 years old, finished her sophomore season at Duke, was the Matt Herman Trophy winner. And made some folks nervous. We didn't see Michelle Cooper on this registration no. list uh, immediately, but she's there now, and we would anticipate that Gotham makes that selection at number two. Yeah, I think that Gotham, it, it would really behoove them to go with a player like this. Uh, Gotham needs to score goals, right? I mean, they had a lot of problems in 2022, um, but it, I think that it's a really easy answer to say, hey, you got to score goals. And I think that Gotham could sure up across any line of their roster. So they're going to go with the highest pick, and that's going to be Michelle Cooper at this point. I mean, she ended uh, her season in November with Duke and then decided she was no longer returning, which just made a lot of eyeballs bright and, and, and widen to see where this player was going to go. Um, they Duke ended up losing in the quarterfinal to Alabama, in which Michelle Cooper had a brace in that loss to Bama. Uh, the U-20 U.S. captain, she was the golden boot winner and the golden ball winner in the CONCACAF qualifying tournament. She scored eight goals, so she can do it at the international level. Now seeing how she fits into Gotham and their system, but she's she's going to go high, and I think she's going to go number two over Gotham. I'm with you. Let's go to number three. Orlando Pride have their original selection at number three. And we at A3 believe that they're going to go with Izzy Diakia out of Santa Clara, the forward who racked up 50 goals and 14 assists in, over the course of her collegiate career. But listen, when you have those top three picks in in the draft, I think a lot of the energy on these mock boards is, hey, you want to take that best available mm -hmm. talent across the board. And I think you and I maybe want to make a case for a midfielder for Orlando Pride, that maybe that is the position that they should be targeting. But even though that's the position that they might have to target, that that's perhaps the team need, we just feel like if Izzy Diaki is on this board, that they're going to go with her at number three. I do. I mean, even when you look at someone like Izzy Diakia, this is a player that is traditionally played forward with Santa Clara. In the draft, I think she also registered as a midfield midfielder. So she has a lot of freedom. She has a lot of versatility, which is why we kept her at number three for Orlando Pride, even though we both think that Orlando could could use more of a midfield player. Um, I also think that someone like uh, Clara Roberts, midfielder out of Florida State, would re be a really good pick for Orlando but I just don't foresee uh, someone like Clara Robbins going this high. And when you have someone like Diakia on the board, you're going to pick her at this point. And with Orlando Pride losing their number two spot, this is their pick in the first round draft. You have to go high at this point. It's not like they've got another pick at 9-10 in this first round. They don't. So with Orlando Pride, I think they have to stick with uh, the forward out of Santa Clara. Uh, she can drop deeper into the midfield. I mean, she's going to add to your game with everything that she can do. She's been a national champion. She's been in the College Cup two times with Santa Clara during her career. Um, All-American first team, WCC Offensive Player of the Year in her senior year. A lot of accolades for this player, and she's going to add to Orlando's team. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I think when you're looking at players, uh, best players available, this is one of those players. And I would anticipate Diakia stays at, at number three if she's still on the board here. I, I, I think it's important that you noted that she did also sort of have the, the forward and midfielder registration attached to her huh. uh, going into this draft. but And making the case for somebody like a Clara Robbins, I think who's more just like that pure midfielder, which is why we think at number four, for racing Louisville FC, we think that Clara Robbins might go to Louisville or stay with Louisville, question mark. <laughs> the midfielder out of Florida State University. For folks who are unaware, Clara Robbins has spent some time in the USLW League with racing uh, Louisville side. Uh, made some uh, a pretty impressive appearances. Uh, Ten matches, racked up uh, four goals and assists. Uh, 
really, really good showing, I think, <laughs> during a brief yeah. time uh, with this side, uh, whether it was, uh, you know, going up against uh, the Indy 11 or King's Hammer FC, uh, all those other great clubs in, in, in USLW League. So someone who has coming out of a fantastic program in Florida State University, but also had this has this added layer to her with a handful of games with the USLW League. So I think when we're lo also looking at, yes, at this point in the first in the first round, who are those best players available to make at these very early selections? But perhaps if you're a certain team with very, very heavy needs like Louisville, they need players who could probably come in and slot in immediately. You're also looking for players who are quote unquote NWSL ready, right? Maybe players who yeah. aren't going to need that much time to get acclimated. And I think if you're looking at a certain position on the pitch, if you're looking at that middle third, I think Clara Robbins is the most midfield ready uh, player to go uh, in this first round. I agree. She is totally midfield ready. I think that's a, a really good way to put it. And when you look at at racing Louisville and kind of the roster that they've built up, they have a a, a midfield that is very young. You look at uh, Jalen Shaw, uh, Jalen Howe, excuse me, Savannah DeMello, um, uh, Lauren Malay, who sometimes slots into that midfield. This is a uh, Lauren Malay being one of the most veteran ones with just a few years in the league under her belt. So adding in someone else like Clara Roberts could seem a bit dangerous for Kim Bjorkegren and racing Louisville. But I think that bringing someone, um, from Virginia into this team, Florida State University. She has experience playing at Louisville. I think that's what gives her a really big upper hand. Uh, she's won a national championship in 2018 when she was young on this FSU team. Um, and, and when she finished in 2020 U, uh, 2022 at FSU, she finished with 110 games played. That was the most in Florida State history and the second most in women's college soccer history. So she's played a crap ton of games. And I think that yeah. that experience will really lend to what she can bring to racing Louisville. I'll be interested to see, though, how she fits into to what they're doing in the midfield. And I could see her even – she's a midfielder, but she has also played defense later in her career or in other stages. So to see her dropped into the back line perhaps for Kim Bjorkegren, I think that could be a benefit too. Uh, we'll see if Bjorkgren uh, has that vision uh, in this selection. I think this is an area of the draft though, where maybe we could get the potential for mm -hmm. another shakeup. Maybe this middle portion of the table is where we start to see some trades again. I feel like Portland Thorns already made the, the, the move to try to get in higher into this draft, and maybe they humor uh, Racing Louisville to, to negotiate another trade because we are looking at a player – in this middle selection at number five in Emily Madrill, the defender out of Florida State US, uh, Florida State University, but has played overseas uh, in Sweden. Again, when we're talking about players who are potentially NWS already, we're talking about Claire Robinson, of course. We're also including Emily Madrill within that same conversation as well. Do we see a swap? Does Racing Louisville say, hey, We've got some midfielders who are locked up here, but we really have our eye on Clara Robbins. And we're thinking that we're going to take her at number four. Maybe we get into a trade here with uh, with Portland Thorns, who yep. perhaps also need to make a selection for a defender. So there are. it's interesting that in number four and in number five, there's a similar team need here for going I with agree. a defender. And what's it going to look like within these two positions? But if things shake out, there's the potential for somebody like Emily Madrill to go number five to Portland Thorns, who, look, they've got Becky Sauerbrunn. They've yeah. got Emily Menges. I think it's pretty evident that Kelly Hellblade got next. I mean, she is the player that you want to make sure you continue to build within that back line at the center back position. Who else are you bringing in to ensure that you have depth at this role? I think uh, you're looking at somebody like Emily Madrill. I agree completely. I, I think it's interesting you talk about the shakeup. I mean, this was um, – Emily Madrill is a player that I think – before we had the draft list and before we knew what was really happening with Michelle Cooper saying that she's going to join Alyssa Thompson saying that she's going to enter the draft. Emily Madrill is a player that I think would have gone higher perhaps than five if it wasn't for some of these superstar forwards coming in, in, in Thompson and Cooper and Izzy Diakia. Um, but Emily Madrill, a, a tremendous 
player, a tremendous, tremendous defender, uh, formerly with Florida State, and who has the professional experience because she's uh, been playing overseas in Sweden. And I think that that gives a huge upper hand to a team like Portland Thorns. Um, I- I'm honestly like a little shocked that we have Madrill so low, right, at five. I'm putting quotes around that. But it's more yeah. on team's need at this point. And although she is, is one of the – top defenders in this entire draft and and we saw a defender go number one last year uh the year before in emily fox last year naomi germa um i don't think it's unusual to see a defender go this high but based on team's needs the forwards are going to go first and that leaves emily madrill to this five spot and i think her going to portland thorns would be incredible for her career imagine the development of a player like emily madrill learning underneath someone like a Becky Sauerbronn, a Kelly Hubley who's gone through the fight of it, um, it, playing in front of a Belle Bigsby, right? Playing with and against someone in training like Sophia Smith. I think the development from a drill is going to be most beneficial at Portland. Look, I think uh, going with Madrill, I think anywhere between one to five will probably uh, be a potential landing spot f- for for this player. This is a player that I think has been on multiple teams' radars for probably over the last two years, honestly. Um, but we'll see where she ends up landing. I mean, shout out to to San Diego Wave, right? They they went the defender route. They chose defender yeah. number one overall in, in Naomi Girma. So we'll see if uh, if that's a similar energy in this year's draft. 